Kyle Lowry in a sign and trade agreement once discussions begin, according to Woj. If Lowry takes his talents to South Beach, Perk, we'll start with you on this one. Will the Heat be a threat in the East? Yeah, absolutely. Do you talking about Ann Kyle Larry, a guy who's a, one of the best floor generals in the game today, the ultimate leader, a guy that doesn't rely on his athleticism to get it done, one of the ultimate competitors, and you put him in that Miami Heat culture along with one of the best coaches in the game today in their exposure with Jimmy Butler and Bam, and I'm not going to say his last name because I don't feel like he and Christine and Dominique laugh today, <laughs> but I'm going to give y'all a laugh. And Bam out of the box. You okay? Nailed you put it. him in there with Bam <laughs> and that heat culture. He fits. It's a perfect marriage, okay? Kyle Larry is a guy that is not going to let up. He's a guy that's going to keep coming. That's what Jimmy Butler is accustomed to. That's what Eric Spoelstra and his heat culture loves and they embrace. If the Miami Heat could get Kyle Larry, of course there'll be a yeah. threat in the Eastern Conference. Now, would I pick him? Probably not, but there'd definitely be a threat. <laughs> I guess, I guess you and I can define threats differently because <laughs> unless something is going to happen to the Nets or something is going to happen to the Bucks, and frankly, I, I feel like the 76ers are the same place. Like, they don't become a threat like that. They're going to make the playoffs again. They might win a round, maybe, but they're not going to be in the finals, in the conference finals. They're not a real threat adding Kyle Lowry. Like, I understand Spoh's a great coach, and uh, Duncan what? Robinson, maybe Tyler Hero will return to what we saw, uh, the player he was in the bubble, and Bam out of Bayou. You're right. He's an outstanding player. But let's look around that conference. They are not a real threat adding Kyle Lowry, and I appreciate what you said about him never having relied on his athleticism. So maybe a the fact that he's 35 doesn't matter as much and maybe he can go down there to heat culture he already frankly embodies the heat culture so I think all of that makes sense they become a better team he fits down there that's all great but they don't become better than the Bucks they don't become better than the Nets so no, unless Dominic, we're gonna have a catastrophic year like we had this year with injuries or something they are not coming out of there where people are healthy and if no. everybody's healthy and at top strength they're not getting past either of those two teams I, Dom, Dominic, we do realize that this same my this Miami Heat team went to the finals last year, right? Yeah, two I years ago. I remember. They represented the Eastern Conference. Okay, and so and so, no disrespect to to Goran Dragic and no disrespect to Kendrick Nunn, but Kyle Lowry is a serious upgrade from those two players, and right. one of the most important positions in the NBA is the point guard position. Who's going to be the leader to be the floor general? It's so many times that we have watched Jimmy Butler and Bam have to run the point forward or Jimmy Butler have to slide to the point where he have to orchestrate the offense instead of worry about getting buckets. That wears him down. You Now you add Kyle Larry, a guy where Eric Spoelstra don't have to call sets every time down. A guy that's going to make sure he put Jimmy Butler in position to be successful to put the ball in the basket. A guy that's going to get Bam easy, good looks because of the way that he attacks and put pressure on the defense. Again, I'm not picking the Heat to come out the East, right. but let's not sit up here and disrespect them and say I'm, that they're not I, going to be a threat. Yeah, I, I'm not looking to disrespect them, but they're not going to be a threat to come out of the East. So I think we agree on that. You're phrasing it differently, but you don't think they're going to actually beat either of those teams. And I appreciate that they went to the finals in the bubble, but I think that that season was different. That season was about mental toughness, and that is a very mentally tough team led by Jimmy Butler. They got through that season because of mental toughness. Every other season in the NBA is honestly, is mostly about talent. And frankly, they don't have the talent. Honestly, like adding Kyle Lowry is a talent upgrade. You're right about Dragic and uh, Kendrick Nunn. They are not the player that Kyle, no. Kyle Lowry is, but they still do not compare to the talent that you're going to see in New York with the Nets or in Brooklyn with the Nets or in Milwaukee with the Bucks. So unless we're going to go back to the bubble, which the way y'all people is acting, maybe we will end up in a bubble next year. Then I'll pick the Heat to go to the finals potentially because that season will be different. It'll again be about a mentally tough team, which the Heat are. But if that doesn't happen, it's going to be about talent and they don't have the talent, even if you add Lowry to jump past the Bucks. D Dominique, Dominique, do you, do you know you have to mentally, being mentally tough, in any atmosphere, whether it's in a bubble or not, you have to be mentally tough to win a championship. Agreed. 
Giannis had to be mentally my okay then so well no, that's not even an argument. Don't move the goalpost. I'm not you moving the goalpost. You have to be post. mentally tough. I'm like, saying that yes, there you is are, a you talk, listen. Go, go ahead. I'm <laughs> trying to tell you. If you look at Giannis and what he did against the Phoenix Suns, being down 0-2, the start of the series, and winning four straight and dropping a 50-piece to close them out, your mental has to be different. You, right. has to, you have to be mentally Agreed. tough. You have to be mentally tough and locked in and focused to go up to the free throw line and to keep attacking the basket, knowing that they're going to foul you and put you on the free throw line and go 17 from 19 from the free throw line. That's mental toughness. Agreed. I'm not saying that. So we don't disagree on that. I'm just saying that different things matter at different times. Like they matter more in that particular season. That was the only season where I felt like mental toughness was more important than anything else. I'm not saying you don't have to be mentally tough, but in the NBA, what it comes down to oftentimes in the playoffs is who has the yeah. most talent. The most talented team no, normally you, wins you, in the NBA playoffs. In football playoffs, is you, oftentimes okay, there's yeah. a different ranking of that. Okay. And it's a lot of times it's health, and it's a lot of luck okay. because it's a single-game playoff. It's a lot, of, a lot more coaching than in basketball, and then also talent matters. So I'm saying that all those things matter, uh, but depending uh, uh, on the circumstances, different things matter more. The Heat went to the finals in that bubble year because uh, mental toughness was at a premium that year, and this is quite possibly one of the most tough teams mentally in the league. I'm saying that this coming season, it's not going to matter nearly as much. It's going to go back to normal and where talent kind of prevails, and that's what's going to uh, happen. They still don't have the talent to get them past it. The mental uh, toughness is going to get them to the playoffs. It may get them to a game seven in round two, but that's not going to be enough to get them past the Nets. Like, it's just not. I don't care how tough their brains are. They're not going to be able to uh, outscore them three boys in Brooklyn. Nick, really quick question. Uh, okay, and I'm not you saying think... that they're not. Go ahead. I was going to say, do you think that the Heat need one more piece and then they're yeah. actually contenders in the East? I think that's that's it, honestly. Like, I think if they add one more piece, I'm not sure if that piece is out there, honestly. Like, this year's free agency class is, is not one with a big home run hitter in it necessarily unless Kawhi decides to do something that, that we were, will all be surprised by. Like, I think Kyle Lowry is probably the guy who's the best fit for them out there, but they're going to have to find somebody else, make another move throughout the course of the upcoming season in order to be a real threat to, to Milwaukee or, or Brooklyn. To all me. right, so I'm a fair weather Heat fan, so I'll take Kyle Lowry mm. all day. <laughs> uh, still to come on first take, Kawhi opts out of his deal. Contracts to stay with the Clippers. He could do a one plus one uh, that takes him through what's largely going to be a rehab year next season coming off that ACL. He can sign a longer term deal. And obviously, if he wants to look elsewhere in the NBA, he can do that as an unrestricted free agent. Although, uh, the expectation is he will return to the Clippers uh, here in the uh, short term. All right, Kawhi averaged 30.4 points in the playoffs, most in a single postseason in Clippers history, so they'd love to have him back. Hey, let's go east to the Sixers, Woj. What are you hearing about the possibility of a trade involving Ben Simmons? Hey, Jay, the Sixers continue to canvas the league looking uh, for deals involving uh, Ben Simmons and you know they certainly would like to get something done before the start of training camp uh, you know, talks with teams like Portland Minnesota uh, Toronto uh, any number of teams around the league have interest in in Ben Simmons it's a question of how much are they willing uh, to pay and we, we could add a number of teams to that list the Sixers are asking you know for a steep return an all-star level player multiple first round picks, trade swaps. Uh, they've not found a team yet that's willing uh, to, to pay that premium for Ben Simmons. But both Ben Simmons and the Sixers uh, are hopeful that they'll find a solution, find him a new de destination before the start of next season. Simmons finishing second in the Defensive Player of the Year voting this past season, just behind Rudy Gobert. Adrian Wojnarowski.